Hi, Gordon. Um, as you know, my company, 29 Studios, we have a programme right now which we're rolling out a modern apprenticeship to get young people into the creative industries. And we're working in partnership with one of the local colleges, the Glasgow College. But one of the hidden benefits that people are not aware of is that the European funding that comes straight into the heart of Glasgow and supports companies like me will, support, will sponsor 50% of the salary of young people who are trying to get into the workforce. That's 50% of their salaries and that's European funding. So there's loads of hidden benefits that people are unaware of. We're trying to bring 20 young people into a job. So what are the hidden benefits? What are the key benefits of staying in Europe? The flip side of this is that you've got um, a case of we can have more sovereignty. Uh, but if you still have to apply the uh, the European regulations in order to trade with the common market, you don't get really much boost in, in, in sovereignty. Uh, you get a little bit of flexibility, and that's it. But the other thing is that uh, what what, do you, what can you do if you're a, if you're a Brexiter? And sorry, I didn't totally answer Alan's question before. If you're a Brexit campaigner, what really motivates you? One of the things I keep hearing is that that the not having to totally carte blanche apply all of the uh, EU. Uh, regulations uh, means we can we can make our nation more competitive. Uh, the only way you can do that is to have less maternity pay, less holiday pay, less workers' rights. Get rid of two ping so you can just get rid of people when you buy a company, etc. You know, would we want to implement these these regulations? Uh, would we want to? Uh, lessen the fire retardant ability of the pajamas that we kids pajamas we we import from uh, you know the far east and so you get all these benefits so so I actually wouldn't want to get rid of them uh, rid of a lot of the European standards now for example uh, one of the key ones is the uh, European Commission on Human Rights the Tories have said they want to get rid of this and one of the reasons they didn't actually get rid of the Human Rights uh, Act uh, was because they um, were given advice, legal advice, that said that the EU would be angry with that, there might be sanctions, all these sort of things, so they decided to leave it alone. So if we Brexit, the Human Rights Act will go and something else will be put in its place. Well, if you write a whole new piece of legislation, that's going to cost a lot of money, isn't it? And why would the EU have better human rights than people in Britain? Don't we deserve the same human rights as them? You know, so there's a balance there. Now, that's some of the, the, the negatives. There'll still be immigration, there'll still be fees, and some of the deals. Um, but the benefits, um, well, obviously, uh, Scotland's a, a, a significant exporter per head versus the rest of the UK, or well, versus uh, versus uh, most of England anyway. Uh, we have significant uh, uh, skin in the game in finance as well. Uh, we have um, uh, a very strong track record in FDI, foreign direct investment, uh, and also we benefit from immigration. Uh, we also do far better in terms of EU grants. Um, so there's all of these things add up to a slightly different picture between, so quite clearly, Scotland, uh, I, would, I would say actually uh, Wales does best, Northern Ireland does second best, uh, and then Scotland does third best, and then uh, poor England uh, kind of contributes an awful lot of the money that is distributed uh, uh, that way. So I think overall... Uh, the key benefits for Scotland, and, uh, and you mentioned the 50%. The yeah. Business for Scotland has now hired, I think, uh, seven graduate uh, um, interns, uh, and the EU has paid half of their wages. And that's available to any one of you that's got a business within an area that's actually uh, accredited by the EU to do that. So you can hire young people, you can hire apprentices, etc., and get EU funding. But nobody knows that. If anything, people think it's the council that's paying for it, but it's not. It's the EU, and the council just administers that. So, yeah, there's a lot of hidden benefits. The rubbish at doing their own press. So, from my point of view, for Scotland, uh, being a member of the EU creates more, uh, better quality, and better paid jobs.